the only one I'm tired? <laughs> Exhausted, yawning. There's no amount of coffee that can get me going this morning for some reason. We're in our final week of this teaching series, Hard Choices. And if you haven't been with us, I'll catch you up briefly. Uh, what we've been discussing is the idea that where we are in life right now is a direct result or the sum total of the decisions that we've made in the past. And in effect, where we will be in the future, who we will be in the future, is a direct result of the decisions we make today. Therefore, if we want a better future, to be better people in the future, then we need to make some hard choices or hard decisions today to positively influence or affect our future. I want to start this morning by asking you a question that I believe I know the answer to, but I'm going to ask you anyway. How many people in here would say that they wish there was more time in the day? <laughs> just wish that there was more time in the day. There's just not enough time. I wish I had more time. Right? I wish I had more time to fish. I wish I had more time to relax. I wish I had more time to read, maybe take a vacation or, you know, unwind, recharge the batteries, travel, whatever, you know, may be important to you. I just wish I had more time. But I don't. Because the house needs clean. There's dishes that need done. There's laundry. There's yard work that has to be done. I have these projects at work that I need to catch up on. It's just like there's always something to do. And if you have nothing to do, you have kids that are taxiing you around, right? We're constantly moving. There is always something to do. I wish I had more I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but I'm very much guilty of it myself. Have you ever asked somebody, hey, how's it going, or how are you doing? And they respond and say, busy. I'm busy. I've got a full calendar. There's this, and there's that, and these other things, and then the kids are involved in these things, and this is going on at work, and we're always busy. I don't know that I've ever asked somebody, how are you doing? And they say, I'm relaxed and stress-free. <laughs> you just don't get that, right? We, we don't have that. I don't know, maybe you feel the same way, but I think that there's some truth in that, right? There's, there's seems like there's never enough time in the day to do the things that we need to do. We wish we would have more time to do certain things. But here's the thing about this. We always have time for the things that we choose to have time for. That makes sense? We always have time for the things that we choose to have time for. So if, you know, any, any time you'd say that, you know, I really wish I had more time for this. I wish I had more time to fish. Well, that means you've already chosen to do something else over fishing. I wish I had more time to clean the car. Well, I'm choosing to do something else instead of cleaning the car. And we can apply that same thing to our spiritual walk and say, I wish I had more time to read my Bible. Well, that just means we're choosing to do something else over reading our Bible. Or I wish I had more time to go to church, to attend church the church functions, to serve the church. Well, that means we're choosing something else over those things. Today we're going to talk about choosing the important things over choosing the urgent things. Say that again. Choosing the important things over choosing what's 
urgent. And, and, you know, maybe in your mind the two sound the same, right? Important things are urgent and urgent things are important, but that's not necessarily the case. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Say you're driving your car. And you know you're 8,000 miles over on your oil change. You haven't checked the oil in months. You just assume it's good. And then it starts making a funny noise. And then the check engine light comes on. And now all of a sudden your, your vehicle is damaged and the engine's damaged and you've got to get the vehicle fixed. Fixing your car is now an urgent thing. Proper maintenance and changing the oil is an important thing. Say you're a business owner and you have an upset customer, right? And they're, they're complaining about something and, and you're trying to address the upset customer. Now, addressing that upset customer is an urgent thing. But having the proper systems in place as a business owner to prevent customers from getting upset, that's an important thing. Or maybe you never really you know, took care of your body. We didn't do the diet and exercise thing. And, you know, we kind of eat what we want. We don't go to the doctor. We're stressed all the time. And inevitably what happens, your body breaks down and you get sick. Now, healing your body from that sickness is an urgent thing. Taking better care of your body and your physical health so that you don't get sick, that's an important thing. You kind of get where we're going with this. Important things aren't urgent, but important things can become urgent if they're not addressed. There's a difference. Author Seth Godin says that if you choose what is important, you won't deal with as many things that are urgent. If you choose what is important, you will not deal with as many things that are urgent. And the opposite of that is never true. If you're only addressing urgent things, then you will never have time to address important things. I want to talk about a Bible story that kind of addresses this or this point, this idea. And it's in Luke 10. And you guys are familiar with Martha and Mary. And in this particular story in Luke 10, Jesus is traveling to see Martha and Mary. And it's Luke 10, verse 38. And it says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered the village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And again, you know, I, I say this often, right, like when we talk about guests coming over and the condition of our house, and when someone comes over, they send you the text or call, hey, we're going to stop by, what do you do? You drop everything, and you do that flight of the bumblebee, clean up the entire house as fast as you can, right? Instead of everything scattered, maybe we just put it in one pile so there's some clean surfaces and you're throwing stuff in closets you're vacuuming and mopping whatever right because guests are coming over the house has to be clean for guests now imagine if you will jesus the messiah the holy lamb the almighty the son of god is coming over to your house what are you going to do you are going to clean the house the same way but in overdrive Right? We have got to get the house clean and prepared for Jesus. So let's see what happens in verse 39. It says, she had a sister, this is Martha, had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. So we have Jesus coming to the house. And Martha is, much like we would be, consumed with everything that had to happen. We have guests, and they need drinks, and we need food, and the chips are low, so we got to restock the chips, right? And we got to clean the dishes and, and make sure people feel welcome and, and are happy to be here at my house. I need to be hospitable. I need to serve the guests. But Mary, who is a sister to Martha, who lives in the home as well, Mary couldn't care less about the guests. Mary sees Jesus 
sits at his feet and listens to Jesus teaching. So Mary, in this instance, has chose what's important. Mary has chose to sit with Jesus, to study with Jesus, to be with Jesus and spend time in his presence. Mary has chose what is important over what is urgent taking care of the house, taking care of the guests. But Martha, it says, was distracted by the urgent things. And as a result, she failed to choose the important thing. And the text says that Martha was distracted, and that word is a Greek word. And this is the only place, actually, in the New Testament that this in particular word appears. It's perisopo. It means to distract to be driven about mentally, to be over-occupied, too busy about a thing. Mary is too busy. She's too distracted. She's too worried about serving the guests and the people in her home. And she fails to see the important thing, which was Jesus in front of her. Because she's busy with the urgent. Thing. And so now she's upset, and she addresses this with Jesus, and it says she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. And I'm sure she's thinking in her mind, oh, Jesus will tell her to help me. Right? Jesus will tell her to get up, off her butt, get on your feet, and serve these people, because Jesus was about service, Right? Serving people before yourself. And, and here she is running around serving all these people and her sister's just sitting here listening to Jesus. It's not fair, Jesus. Tell her to help me. There's this really urgent thing. And Mary won't help me with it. I'm on my own, Jesus. You know, oftentimes it's difficult for us to see the difference between the urgent thing and the important thing. It says that Jesus answered her and said, Martha, Martha. I always want to add an extra Martha to it, right? Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. You're distracted, Martha, by all of these urgent things, but you're missing the important things. He said, Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Mary chose what was important. And what was important in that moment was time at the feet of the Messiah, learning, studying, being in his presence. And she chose that over the urgent thing of trying to take care of and cater to, to the people and the guests of the house and keep the house clean. I think the story it brings about a very important point to you and to me. We need to identify and address the important areas of our life, or they will become urgent things. We need to choose the things that are important before they become urgent. And think about it for a minute. And this is specific to you. I can't answer this question for you. You have to think about it and answer it for yourself. But what is the most important thing in your life that you have been distracted from pursuing? The most important thing in your life that you have been distracted from going after, from pursuing. Maybe it's simple. Maybe it's time with God. Maybe you don't feel very close to God and you've been distracted by something else and you're not spending time reading your Bible, spending time in prayer. Maybe it's time with your kids. right? Maybe your children have activities, but they've become a low priority because you've got all this other stuff going on. Maybe it's your marriage need, you know, just in general, work with your marriage, a better marriage, a more intimate relationship with your spouse. Maybe it's working out or your physical health, reading, journaling. Maybe 
It's going to church. Maybe it's serving the church. What is the most important thing in your life that you have been distracted from pursuing? We must choose the important things in life over the urgent. So the question becomes, how do we do this? Right? How do we address specific areas of our lives? How do we become better at identifying and pursuing the important things over the urgent things? And there's three things that I have that I think will help. These aren't necessarily biblical things. These are things that uh, I've heard different podcasts, different leadership things, uh, things that I do that I think are incredibly helpful in us, helping us to pursue and accomplish the important things in life. The first thing is this. Create artificial deadlines. Okay, create artificial deadlines. What is an artificial deadline? It's a deadline that's artificial. <laughs> it's fake, right? It doesn't mean anything, but I'm creating a fake deadline for a task. Let me give you an example of this. This message that I am giving to you this morning, right now, was due, the deadline for it was when? Today at about 11.20 p.m., right? Wrong. This message was due Monday, April 25th, four weeks ago. Because in my messages and in my writing, I create artificial deadlines. I stay three to four weeks ahead in writing my messages. Why do I do that? Because my messages are very, very important things. And I need time to study. I need time to write. I need time to consolidate my thoughts and if I don't stay ahead, then this important thing becomes a very urgent thing when it's Friday and I don't have a message ready for Sunday. So I create an artificial deadline. Another example, if let's say you're going on vacation Friday after you get out of work. But you got to accomplish all these tasks, the Monday through Friday tasks, and get them done before you leave on vacation or else what happens? You leave for vacation and you end up bringing work with you because you gotta get stuff done. So you create a deadline on Thursday and say this is all due Thursday by the end of the day. COB Thursday. And then you work to achieve that deadline. And if it doesn't get met, well now you got Friday morning to finish up the loose ends so that you can go on vacation and relax. But create an artificial deadline. And I'll admit it doesn't always work. You see, because I'm human and I know it's an artificial deadline and sometimes I use that to my advantage and say, well, I got some of it done. But creating artificial deadlines will increase productivity. Right? It makes you work better. It makes you work faster. It makes you work harder. And it helps you at addressing the important things. Get the important things done so that they do not turn into urgent things in your life. We're going to create artificial deadlines. The second thing that you have to do, and I will very much admit that I am terrible at this, and you can ask Kara. The second thing is you need to be ruthlessly selective with your yeses. Be ruthlessly selective with what you say yes to. I think one of the biggest and most difficult barriers that we face in a meaningful life is not a lack of commitment, but it's over-commitment. Any busyness that you have to deal with. Because busyness does not necessarily equal productivity. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're, you're productive, right? I think it's something that most of us struggle with. We want to say yes. We want to tell people yes. When they ask us, can you or will you or are you able to, we want to say yes. We want to be part of the crowd. We want to make people happy. We want to, to help people. So what do we do? We say yes. And in the back of our mind, we know we should say no. 
We know we don't have the time or the energy or the effort or the ability within us to do it. It's something we don't really want to do, but we say yes, and then we end up with way too much on our plate. And because we have so much on our plate, we tend to ignore certain or neglect even important things, and then we don't address them until they become urgent things. There's not enough time in the day. It's something that I've struggled with for a very long time. I am getting better. I am no longer afraid of telling someone, no, I can't do that. No, I don't have the time for that. But we need to start saying no to certain things so that we have the room, so that we have the capacity for the important things. You know, it's interesting. I don't know where I heard this, but I like the quote. The best leaders don't do more. The best leaders do more of what matters most. We need to be selective, ruthlessly selective with our yeses. And the third thing, part of that quote, do what matters most, and do what matters most first, right? We have to identify what it is that is important for us, right? The most important thing for us, if you would say, I wish I had more time to blank, whatever that thing is for you, maybe, again, it's a date night with your spouse, right? Whether it's weekly, whether it's monthly, Maybe you want better physical health. You want to work out more. You, you want to have time to, to go for a run or go for a walk at the end of the day. Maybe you need a vacation, right? Some time away to, to rest and relax and recharge the batteries, whatever it is for you. Because again, you always have time to do the things that you choose to have time for. So you need to identify what it is that is most important to me, what it is that matters most to me. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to make that hard decision and then we're going to schedule it. And then everything else gets filled in around that. We're going to initiate and calendar my priorities, the things that matter most, and that's what happens Right? So if you want maybe a better, uh, more intimate marriage or better relationship with your spouse, that means Thursday nights at 6 o'clock is date night with my spouse. And that's on the calendar, and it's in the calendar hard. And when a friend says, hey, we're, we're doing this thing on Thursday nights, you say, sorry, I'm busy Thursday nights. We schedule it first. Right? Maybe you want to improve your health. Then you schedule time in your schedule to go for the walk, to go to the gym, to go for a run. Maybe you feel like you need to be better or closer or more connected with God. Then we schedule time to read our Bible. We schedule time to pray. We join a Bible study group and know that it happens every Wednesday or it happens every Sunday evening. Right? We don't just sit around and do all these other things and wait for us to have time to do something else. You have to make it a priority. It's like us with church. We don't, we don't plan things for Sundays because Sunday is church. That is a priority for, for us, for my family. It is important for us. It is an important thing that we schedule. And yes, occasionally something happens and we're busy on Sundays and we don't go to church on Sundays. But 99% of the time on Sundays, we're here because it's an important thing. We have to choose to have time for the important things. You know, if you look at the story, Martha chose the urgent thing. And we're no different. We would choose the urgent thing too. People are coming over. There's tasks to be done. We need to serve. And our guests need this. And this needs to be clean. And it was Mary who chose the important thing. To sit at the feet of Jesus. To be with Jesus. To study. And Jesus 
said of Mary that she has chosen the good portion. She chose what was important, and it will not be taken away from her. And you know, we live in an incredibly busy, fast-paced, over-committed culture. Everybody's busy. And I'm guilty of it too. Me too. There's constantly something going on, and we're running from here to there. We're busy. We're distracted. And I think that that's part of Satan's plan. If he cannot directly destroy people, then maybe he can distract people. And we live in a very distracted world. I think we need to stop living to address the urgent things that happen to us in our life. We need to start setting maybe some artificial deadlines. We need to be selective in our yeses, and we need to choose to do the important things first. It's up to you, though, to decide what is the important thing. It's a question I can't answer for you. What is the important thing? Things for you. I can tell you that some of the important things should be to decide or develop your relationship with God, to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. An important thing should be to love your neighbor as yourself. An important thing should be to be part of a faith community to go to and to serve the church. An important thing should be to be a witness to Jesus. We get far too distracted sometimes by the busyness that is our own fault. It's our own doing, and we get distracted, and we have urgent things that come and go, and we focus on the urgent. Instead, we need to shift the way that we think. Let's focus on choosing the important things before they become urgent things. And if we do that, I think we'll find we have a lot more time than we realize. Let's pray. Father God, in a busy world, in a busy culture, in a busy society, it is hard for us to not be consumed with the busyness of activity that we have. And whether it's work, whether it's family stuff, whether it's just personal things that we choose, whether it's kids and running them from activity to activity, whether it's our previous commitments, God, we are just so busy. Busy people become distracted people. And distracted people think we lose focus. We lose focus on our mission. We lose focus on, on you. God, when we get that busy and that distracted, we have a tendency of neglecting the important things and reacting to the urgent things. God, it's my prayer today that you would be with us, that your spirit would guide us, show us the important things in life, God. The things that we need to work on addressing. We understand, God, that we have time for the things that we choose to have time for. I pray, God, that your spirit would convict us in areas where we need conviction, would encourage us in areas where we've been doing things right. God, that you would show us how we can be people who are better at choosing the important things. Avoiding the reaction to the urgent things. God, we thank you for this time together, for this time of worship and studying of your word. And God, I pray that as we leave this place, you would be with us, that your spirit would guide us and direct us, that you would give us opportunities, God, to improve upon ourselves and our relationship with you, but also, God, to share you, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the peace 
that we have from you to share that with the world around us. God, we thank you for this beautiful day, this time of friendship and fellowship. I ask God that you would be with us as we leave here and bring us back to her safely next week. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. And always, in the name of your Son,